you're listening to Real Love, Real Stories. And this, my friend, is a podcast to share love stories and also get tips on building meaningful relationships in all aspects of your life. This is your girl, Kanu. I'm the host and producer of the show, and I'm a therapist by training turned love guru. I am so thrilled that you have tuned in because without you, this wouldn't be so fun. So here is another great episode. Enjoy. This episode is brought to you by Mindful Matchmaker, a service that is matching grounded and authentic singles. If you are in British Columbia and are seriously looking for love, go to canoejacobson.com for more details. That is K-A-N-U-J-A-C-O-B-S-E-N.com. Are you our next love story? How to avoid being swindled as an online dater. So by now, many of you have had a chance to watch the documentary called Tender Swindler. And I waited this long because I didn't want to spoil it for you. And also, I wanted to think about it a little bit longer and see if anything else surfaces up. So if you're asking yourself, what the heck is she talking about? What is this Tinder swindler? Well, let's start with some background. So Tinder Swindler is a British true crime documentary film which was released on Netflix earlier this year. The documentary follows a few women who fell for um, this supposedly son of an Israeli billionaire named Simon Levive, who used the dating app called Tinder. And he used it to connect with individuals who uh, who he then emotionally manipulated into financially supporting his lavish, and I mean lavish, lifestyle. And that was on the pretense that he needed money to escape his enemies. Okay, so and many of you may be married. You may be asking yourself, what the heck is Tinder? So let's give some background there as well. So Tinder is an online dating app where users swipe right to show that you like the profile. And then you swipe left to dislike the profile. And what how it works is that you know, when there's a match, so you swipe right and then the other person swipes right and then there's a match and then the woman is the one who initiates um, the conversation. So on the profile, you have a photo or photos, a bio, and then a list of your, um, of that person's interest. Okay, so back to Tinder Swindler. So this is such a sad, sad reality that happens more than people realize. But as indicated by the stats I shared in the last episode, which I think are worth repeating here as well. So in 2021, Canadians lost $50 million to romance scams. In 2021, romance scams, they hit the record high in the U.S., where Americans lost $547 $547 million according to the Federal Trade Commission. This is becoming like a business, I guess, for a lot of people. But today we're talking about Tinder Swindler, which, by the way, I think this is the king of all catfish or the king of all dating fraud. This guy conned an estimated $10 million from people mostly unsuspecting single women from all over the world. So let's start by describing Simon Levive, which, by the way, that's not his legal name. So he pretended to be the son of an Israeli diamond billionaire. He said he was single, always traveling, and he was always flexing hard as a high-caliber guy with money and always wearing all these luxury brands from head to toe. I'm a person who appreciates luxury brands, but you won't find me head to toe walking, like a walking advertisement of these brands. But hey, this is not what we're talking about and that's not important. So, Tinder Swindler, the documentary focuses on three women, Cecilia, Panila, and Eileen. I have to say, Eileen was my favorite. 
And she got a little bit of satisfaction from selling all this guy's designer clothes. And I think she's the one that really got him arrested. And Cecilia is a sad one for me. She was so affected by this, you know, by being conned that much money. And she ended up checking herself into a mental health facility to deal with it. So that's a sad, sad, sad one for sure. So anyways, if you haven't watched it, you have to watch it. I recommend it, especially if you're single and you tend to be attracted to people who lead a life of luxury. So my analysis, as a therapist, there are many things we can discuss and potentially diagnose. We could discuss the women and why they were conned by this guy, but that's a topic for another day. But for today, let's talk about narcissism. And in this case, grandiose narcissism. In my professional opinion, Simon Levive fits the mold. So grandiose narcissism is characterized by this high egocentricity, low social empathy, high risk-taking tendencies, impulsiveness, and the ability to use others to further their own interest, which is what this guy did. All this money, $10 million to like fund his lavish lifestyle. I mean, it's pretty sad. So as you're doing online dating, there are so many, so many Simon Vibes out there. And some that are not reported, right? But as you can tell by the Federal uh, Trade Commission, romance scams actually is a number one category where they get the most complaints and I think has the highest amount of uh, dollars in terms of scams. And that's both, uh, this is true both in US and in Canada. So there are so many things for you to keep in mind as you're dating online or even meeting people in your day-to-day life. So I wanted to share about five things, maybe six, but five things for sure. Um, So the first one is be aware of guys and girls who flex really hard on their profiles. You know, and I'm not trying to like say people who show that they have money, they're bad people, but Usually people with money, they don't flaunt it like that. So they use this luxurious lifestyle to lure lure you in. Just remember that looks can be deceiving. When you think about Simon's profile, um, it was oozing with like luxury brands, jets, Bentleys, and many, many, many other things. Like I said, he would wear designer clothes from head to toe. (sighs) Ah, <sighs> so anyway, number two. So t- trust must be earned over time. I want to talk about Cecilia in this case. She met Simon on Tinder. They went on their first date at a nice hotel where he supposedly was staying. And uh, at the end of that date, which I I heard it was about an hour, at the end of that date, he is inviting her to go to Amsterdam with him that night. First date. And she says yes. And she gets on this private jet with him and is flying to a whole different place after meeting this stranger one time. Guys, I don't care how you trust the person. I don't care... What? But honestly, meeting a guy for the first time one hour and then you're on a private jet with him to go to another country, I say don't do it. Trust must be earned over time. Even if, you know, in this case where he was surrounded by people like his ex was there, his daughter was there. We don't even know if that those were planted or what the situation was there. But the, oh my God, I would tell my clients, no, 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 don't do it. So trust must be earned over time. (sighs) Anyway, so number three, love bombing. These people with grandiose narcissism 
one of the things they'll do is to just shower you with these flashy gifts. I remember in the documentary, she received a bouquet of a hundred roses. I mean, that's a nice gesture, but we all know that there was an angle there. So be aware of these grand expressions of affection. And also he started talking to her about, let's shop for an apartment in London so we can move in t- together. And by the way, this is not even a month into dating. So when somebody starts talking about moving in so quickly and saying that our budget is $15,000 per month for this apartment, I mean, that is love bombing right there. Trying to just make you feel like this life with him is going to be amazing so you can gain, so he can gain um, your trust right away and fall in love pretty quickly. So be aware of that. And I think one of the ways that can help you, which is my number four point here, is that have a trusted small circle. These are your elevator people. And they are the ones who elevate you by always speaking truth. So what you can do is run things by them before making any decisions, like flying to a city with a guy you just met for one hour, like spending $250,000 sending it to this guy when you haven't even met, you know, been together more than a month. I'm telling you, if you have people in your life who care about you and you pick up the phone and you tell them, hey, I just met this guy, he's really cool and he's invited me to go to Amsterdam with him after meeting him for an hour, should I do it or should I not? I can tell you if you have your elevator people, they're going to say, don't do it because who does that? And you run it by them too that, hey, I've been with this guy for a month or two months or whatever, and he's asking me to send him money because he's trying to run away from his enemies. They're going to tell you, don't do it. And actually, there is power to be said. There's something to be said about you speaking to someone By you just saying it, you're hearing yourself, you can tell yourself, you can realize that this isn't the right thing to do. So have a trusted small circle of your elevator people that you can run things by. And then number five, research the person. And I'll be honest, before Tinder Swindler, I was, you know, I would just do the surface search and call it good. It has served me well. I think I shared in the last episode that I Googled a guy and ended up coming, um, seeing a wedding registry that he had been married two months prior to me meeting him. So that served me well in that case. So for these three women and many other women that this guy conned, if they had researched him, I think that they would have, you have to do like, you know, really in-depth search because this guy was using... um, an alias, which wasn't his real legal name. So, and there were so many like newspaper articles done on him where he had conned other people in other countries and even some articles in different languages. So yeah, I guess it would have been easy to miss, but I think if you do a, like a, a deeper search, that could have served this woman well. And also using a picture, because he used, it was him, he used his real pictures Doing a reverse image search, I think, would have come up with the other articles that were done um, on him in other countries where he was actually running away from being arrested because he committed all these crimes. So honestly, you guys, you have to be really, really careful because, you know, all 540 whatever million that people were scammed in the U.S., and 50 million in Canada, that is just insane. Like, let's really do better, you guys. And here's my bonus point and a shameless plug at it. So use a matchmaker. You know, when you go to a good matchmaker, which I call myself, I consider myself to be a good one, that we have a really good vetting process. We have an in-depth interview with our potential clients 
where we are making sure that we are capturing one, it's an in-person mostly, or maybe on Zoom where you can tell that this person is lying or is not lying. So I have the power to say no to clients if I feel like I'm not getting the truth from them. Um, and actually, I feel like if you are a fraudster, you're not going to take your time to call a matchmaker, pay money to them to say match me so I can find people to like defraud. So I think using a matchmaker eliminates some it's not 100% proof that you won't get fraudsters on there, but I think it eliminates, they can self-select uh, out because they don't want to be asked all the questions that we ask. So there you have it. Hopefully, I will not be reading about you <laughs> in the paper, and hopefully you won't be um, contributing to that large number of people that are being you know, romance scammed out there. Love always. Look at you, my friend. You made it all the way to the end. I'm so grateful. So the fact that you did make it all the way to the end, that means you liked this episode. So go ahead and be a hero. Send it to three people. And then go to iTunes where you can rate and review this podcast. 